we're grateful to God for you for doing that. And also those of you looking from, I'm sure uh, Brazil is on and other, other countries around. So thank you so very much for being with us for that. And we trust that this information will be a blessing to you. And if you need to pick it up later on, you can also uh, go to our YouTube page because there we handle that as well. And our, our um, website page, stc.church. So thank you so very much for being in with us today. Let's get into this lesson for this morning. And of course, we're in this uh, series dealing with 12 Bible study methods out of a book written by Pastor Rick Warren. Of course, my uh, determination for having this series is to inspire, encourage, connect us in some way in getting more involved in doing Bible study. Now, the book talks about 12 different methods. I don't want you to become proficient in all 12 and thus and forth and that. Uh, at a minimum, I want you to get involved and have courage and confidence in your Bible and being able to study it and making specific study time where you can participate in uh, hearing Holy Spirit, hearing, communicating with God, having Holy Spirit help you as you go through that process. Because when you use good and effective Bible study, you can find out the truth about any particular situation that you need to know. You can get insight and understanding and have knowledge about any area that needs to be uh, increased or dealt with and or decreased in your own personal life. It's just a, a magnificent time of being able to allow the Spirit of God to cause the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened for us to know the hope of our calling which is in God, in Christ Jesus, and create in us greater opportunities to embrace our inheritance that is in God, in Christ Jesus. And I want to be bold enough to proclaim and declare that there is no reason for you to continue to be scuffling and struggling with whatever is going on around you. Amen. And if you're already being blessed, then I want you more blessed <laughs> so that you can be an even greater blessing to others. So now here we are. <clears throat> In the area of chapter 6 of that particular book, um, uh, I, I believe Holy Spirit has is, is giving me things to share with you uh, even to, because you know, not everybody has the book, but everybody can study the Bible. And I'm really grateful for those of you. I see some of you having paper Bibles with you this morning. So that's nice. Uh, uh, because I'm going to have us do a little exercise to help us along the way as we go. So then, here's the E word, here's the E word subject matter. It reads like this only by top quality. Mm -hmm. you know, we've got these, uh, I forget what you call them in the store, the brand that's the generic, generic, generic and, and store brand. And back in the day, uh, they used to say like Stovall, <laughs> Stovall <laughs> stuff. But there are there are areas and attitudes that that can help us appreciate that when you relate to things, you want the best. Mm -hmm. yeah. And therefore, I put this title up here uh, mostly to just uh, grab your attention. Mm -hmm. But I want to put a thought, uh, put a concept on the inside of you, that we want to have top quality in dealing with the things that we deal with in our lives. And and I almost want to, ch well, yeah, I will challenge us <clears throat> that we have to stop this just get by thing mm -hmm. and just barely making it business. God did not create us and uh, cause Jesus to come and die and have Holy Spirit and the great uh, generals of scripture and church history come along and teach us and expose us to the truth for us to continue to stumble along and foot dragging and just barely making it, just getting by. No, God wants us to be the head, not the tail. He wants us to be above and not beneath. 
He wants us to be blessed coming in and blessed going out. That's why we call these power situations resolved. Because our God is fighting for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So then, then so then I pull up that this top point about by top quality, only by top quality, from the topical method, a Bible study, topical method, top topical. Oh, see, you ain't laughing. <laughs> so then, so let let so here I'm, I'm going to um, talk just basically a little bit about the stuff that's in the book, but I'm primarily wanting to encourage you to and encourage all of us to just get more involved in studying the Bible. Reading the Bible, studying it, checking out Bible dictionaries, checking out concordances, and other tools that help us. Uh, I, I used to use this expression back in, uh, in, in teaching school where I said I want us to become, not you now, because because I, I said this in schools for ministers and what have you, I mean full-time ministries, et cetera, et cetera. But I say, I want to develop us to be walking, talking, preaching, teaching Bible machines. Amen. That's what I want for God to have on the inside of us. Because through the power of the truth of his word, we can find victory in every situation. Amen. So then now, in the introduction statement, uh, it's a brief little presentation here that talks about the topical method of Bible study involves selecting a Bible subject and tracing it through a single book from either the Old or New Testament or search it through the entire Bible in order to discover, what's those next three words? What God said. Say those words again, now. say those three words again. Find out what? What, what, God says. what do we want to discover one more time? What God, what says. God says. Then it says about whatever that particular topic is. But our goal ought to be we want to know what God has to say about whatever is going on. I mean, after all, we've said this several times in these messages. What God has to say is the most important thing. Now, worldly stuff and natural things, they're trying to change uh, what is right, and now they're calling it wrong, and change what is wrong, and make it right, and, and saying, well, you ought to do this, and you ought not do that, and all this other kind of stuff. But listen, listen, listen. When all is said and done, we need to set up on the inside of ourselves this business about who is God anyway? I mean, who is God? I mean, after all, who is God? I mean, well, what about God that makes it so important for us to get to know? Well, listen, he's God. Amen. And God all by himself. And there is no other God. I mean, even he said that. He said, hey, if there's another God, I don't know him. Now, people come along and try to talk about the God of this and God that and this. And we are all the... We all serve the same God. No, we're not. That's just like back in the day, people used to come on these commercials on TV and say, you know, I'm the son of an eye or a farmer, and if I got this disease, so can you. No, I can't, because I'm not going to do what you do to get what you got. Come on now. So then people try to recognize, well, we're all, we're all serving the same God. There, there's many different gods. How about this? There's many different ways to heaven. No. God said through Jesus, I am what? The way. And what else? The truth. And what else? The life. And what about what about what else? No man comes unto the Father. But God is, well, in the in the tactic of the enemy, they will come along and say, Oh, yeah, but you could get another way. And and the Bible doesn't have to be all of this. It was written way back then and things have changed. So therefore, the Bible is outdated. Blah, blah, blah. 
I'm not about to cuss at the pulpit now. <laughs> Bunk on that mess. Huh? Don't let people to start moving you away from the realization of God is who he is and the Bible is his word. Hmm? Now, I hadn't planned on this, but I need to say this out loud. Say the Bible is, come on, say it. The Word of God. The Word of God is the will of God. The will of God tells me what God wants me to do. And when I do what God wants me to do, say it. God blesses me. Hallelujah. So then, so then it, it's very important and foundational for our lives as believers that we stand on the Bible being the word of God and don't let things, people, situations, or circumstances de 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 dilute what that is all about. Because you'll find great power in your life. Okay, so then we, we use this particular topical Bible study method in order to find out what God has to say about a particular topic. And we find that out by searching through various scripture places and verses in a book or searching through various scripture places in the whole Bible to find out the information that's contained in those particular verses about that subject matter. Okay? Well then, uh, I pulled out of this, this study process two particular scriptures that I want to emphasize today as being our main text scriptures, which, uh, which, 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 is, which will be assisting my effort to, to anchor on the inside of us things about God. Number one is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 9. And in the King James Version, when you read it, you'll find these words. God is faithful. Ooh, I get a thrill just when I say that. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So say this out loud. God has called me to fellowship with Jesus. Say that. God has called me to fellowship with Jesus. Hmm. Now that means, sort of like, uh, you, 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 you're able, you have opportunity. If you're smart, you will engage in inviting Jesus to come to your house. Amen. Sit down in your room with you. I mean, even if you have to hide the bottle, put the <laughs> straighten up the clothes, you know, he'll overlook all of that. Because the most important thing is he wants to fellowship with you. He wants to spend time with you. And the faithful God that arranged this fellowship opportunity will cause that fellowship time to be a blessing to you. Mm -hmm. So say out loud, God is faithful. God is faithful. And then he's called you. This, 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 this thing about people walking around in the world trying to figure out, oh, who am I? And, you know, I don't know whether I'm a, a, a male or a female. Sometimes I'm a male. Sometimes I'm a female. And sometimes I'm over here. Some, hey, hey, hey. God has not caused us to be confused. Amen. Hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I have to let that one pass. <laughs> you know. Oh, I, I, I can say it like this. I can say it like this. The nut and the bolt, you know, the screw and the nut, huh? Two screws don't work. <laughs> Come on now. And when you try to put two nuts together, you got a mess. Oh, somewhere that. Now, they call it on name, but they're true anyhow. <laughs> There's no reason to be confused because we're called. I said no reason to be confused because we're called. And when God calls, he has a specific point to the calling. And what he has called us to do, 
is to fellowship with Jesus Christ, his son. Seems like to me, then therefore, when we spend time in fellowship with Jesus, Jesus will let us know the things that are good for us to do and the things that are not good for us to do. Huh? Yeah. All right, so then, it, uh, so that's first, first Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Then, here's another one that I pray this, I pray this next verse, I pray this next scripture would just absolutely help you, would just absolutely bless you, would just absolutely uh, relieve you. In the first epistle of John, chapter 1, verse 9. So, you know, Corinthians 1, 9, 1 Corinthians 1, 9, uh, 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. In chapter 1 of 1 John, verse 9 reads like this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. The same faithful God. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Maybe I, may, I don't know. Maybe we can do a little visual. Would you take your hands and just kind of do it like this? You know, he clean, it's like he cleanses. He, like, he gets rid of, he takes care of, he disperses, he pushes away our sin. Now look up here just one more time, then you go back to right. But if we go around like this, holding on to our sins, and whining about our sins, and letting people uh, push us down because of our sins, we're going to be in trouble. Yeah. But God, the faithful God, cleanses us. Yeah. Hmm? First epistle of John, chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all that feels good. Unrighteousness. No stain. No left over. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, I think about how marvelous God made these physical bodies. Mm -hmm. That you can feel a grain of sand. One little grain of sand in your shoe. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if you don't take care of it, it can drive you bad. Mm -hmm. Huh? It'll make you walk with a limp in a little while. One little grain of sand stuck in your shoe. The, the body is so well made that God has fixed it so that it is super aware, super sensitive, and the body heals itself. Hmm. Then, therefore, that scripture business in Romans that talks about when the spirit of him who raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells inside of your body, it will quicken your mortal body. It will make a lie your mortal body. So think like this man. If one little grain of sand can have such a major impact on my physical self and how I walk around, can you imagine what it's like to be filled with the anointing of God? Filled with the power of God? Filled, not just a little dip, filled with the Spirit of God working in this body? Oh, that just relaxed my head for a minute because it's like, ooh, that is so marvelous to understand. And yes, it is. And it's true. It's true because it comes out of the Word of Truth, the Word of God. So then, my, my earnest unction for you is for us to then therefore, think like that is so. Mm -hmm. Act like that is so. Mm -hmm.
Talk like that is so. Live like that is so. Keep reminding ourselves that that's what the deal is. And as we do that, it will impact the words that come out of our mouth. And when those words are coming out of our mouth, then the power of those words cause the power of that, whatever that word is about, causes it to come to pass. So when we talk healing, or say it like this, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. You want to go ahead and say that now? Say it. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. No, 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 I'm saying don't get caught away. Don't get di 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 distracted and detoured by how you feel. We're not talking about how you feel. We're talking about what God said. We're talking about the truth of God. So say it one more time. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Say the spirit of God. God. Living on the inside of me yes. makes my body come alive. Hallelujah. So then, get away from this sin consciousness. Always thinking about what you did wrong. Always being concerned about what you said wrong. Always being concerned about what somebody said about the wrong that you wronged them, when you wronged them, when you wronged them. Way back when you wronged them. So wrong. Really wrong, really wrong. <laughs> and get away from that stuff. I said get away from that stuff. Amen. Because every time you think about it, and especially every time you say it, you make it fresh all over again. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, if people are saying something to you, and you, you ought to just sit there and say, hmm, hmm, hmm. Mm. 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 <laughs> Don't say nothing. Because when you respond, you agree with it. And when you agree with it, you make it alive all over again. Notwithstanding, God has cleansed it through our fellowship with Jesus, his son. All right. Now, then I want to push this issue about this business of faithfulness. When you think of the word faithful, do you have, I don't want to get you into trouble, but please understand how I'm making this presentation. Do you have a faithful friend? Do you have a friend that you really consider or think about as being pretty good? I mean, I mean you know, do you have one of those friends that when the smoke clears and the fire cools down and, and when you look around, there they are. Uh, I mean, I mean everybody was just having just having a feel there, ah, rah, they are, ah, but then that one friend mm -hmm. walks up and says, Hey, I am here. I I, I, I got you. Mm -hmm. uh, see? So then sometimes that's a little challenging to do. But the point of the matter is, I want us, and so therefore, it, 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 since it's, it's, it's hard, in, in one sense, to, to know a show enough faithful friend, since it's kind of hard to deal with that, then, then you know, it's kind of hard to appreciate when we say how faithful God is. Because we don't have the experience, if you follow what I'm saying. You know, we don't have, a, we don't have Six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. We don't have six, seven, eight, nine, ten people that we can call faithful. Mm -hmm. And so the sense of faithfulness is not just such a big deal. But I pray that you will allow Holy Spirit to establish on the inside of you today mm -hmm. that God is faithful. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I mean, uh, we, we try to describe like he watches over us all night long, you know. He causes the sun to rise in the morning. He brings us a brand new day every morning. Uh, he's, he's, his compassions don't fail. They're new every morning. He's faithful. If it hadn't been for him, whoo, where would we be? He's faithful. So one more time, say it out loud, God is faithful. God is faithful. Personalize it, God is faithful to me. God is faithful to me. Then let's, 
let's let's praise it. Let's say Allah, thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Amen. So then, um, since God is faithful, and He's living in us, and He created us to be in His image, and He wants us to be like Him, then I want to press the issue today of each of us doing some individual personal consideration mm -hmm. of our level of faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes faithfulness to us, you know, you, you, know, you being faithful to you, mm -hmm. uh, or stretch it out a little bit, being faithful to somebody else, mm -hmm. or stretch it out a little bit more, being faithful in some kind of situation. Can, well, well, Robert said, boy, you almost got me in trouble. If, if, <laughs> if, uh, if the church depended on you, if the God. project depended on you, what would it be? <laughs> well, he just said it just was him, Barb, and Burnell. <laughs> well, but wait a minute, I know, whoa, 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 we just asked the question. Just ask the question. Like, who's that guy I told you the other week? The guy from Great Cross, Georgia, what was his name? Reverend K.D. Lee. Mm -hmm. He used to come and preach revival to St. John Baptist Church in Springfield, Ohio. And before he'd get up to do his revival, and he would preach, boy, he would preach. Sweat be flying, spit be flying, you know, everywhere. <laughs> before he'd start preaching, he would say, I want everybody to repeat after me, not repeat. Everybody repeat after me. <laughs> If every member of my church, church, were just like me, what sort of church would my church be? <laughs> if every member of Salvation Temple Church stayed home the same day you stayed home, mm, what sort of church mm, would Salvation Temple Church be? If every member of Salvation Temple Church were just like you and gave their offerings just like you. Our accounting people would be wore out with the coins and the pennies <laughs> trying to calculate the offerings on Sunday morning. What sort of church would Salvation Temple Church find? So, faithful kind of like means can I count on you? Can I count? If you say you're going to be there, I can take it to the bank. Uh, that's faith. If, 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 if it means when everybody else is on that side over there and you need, and I need you to be on this side over here, you're going to be there. That's faith. And so I want us to do that personal inventory kind of thing uh, this morning and whenever you're checking out this message. Can, and then I'm going to push it way off. Not just me, about counting me. Not just your friend. No, no. Can God count on your faithfulness? What are some of the things that God has to deal with? Well, in the, the support text scriptures, uh, Philippians chapter 2. Let's listen to a little talk from the Apostle Paul in connection with this business that has something to do with this point of faithfulness. In uh, Philippians chapter 2, at verse number 19, King James Version, when you read it there, you'll find these words, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state, when I find out what's up with you. Verse 20 he reads, For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Mm -hmm. Hear the Apostle Paul is saying there's no, there, there's no other person. I'm sending this one, this one right here, because I, I, I expect, because I trust the Lord Jesus, that he's going to do what I tell him to do 
when he gets there. And when he gets there, he's going to find out what's going on with you, and he's going to let me know exactly, specifically. He's not going to give me any evangelistic expressions about how what's going on. And he's not going to be saying what he feels. He's going to tell me exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. The apostle Paul said, I have no man like-minded who will naturally, without pushing, without shoving, without tempting, without uh, having to be bought, mm -hmm. I, who will naturally, just do it because it's right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who will naturally care for your estate. And I think last um, so, 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 over the last several weeks or some some terms ago, you know, I talked a little bit about this business about this young church building here. Yeah. If you go all over the spent and throw it on the floor, it's your church. Yeah. You should pick it up. Well, somebody else. No, who threw it on the floor? <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. And we've got this great little cleaning rotation thing going on. And people come out and say, well, how, what should we do? I say, hey, it's your church. <laughs> clean it like you want it to clean. <laughs> clean it like you want it to be. If you want dust in the corner, if you want trash over there, then if that's what you want to represent you and your church, have at it. Mm -hmm. So then, the point of can God count on you? Let's suppose Let's suppose that there's something, whatever, that's keeping you from coming to church. Some whatever. And you allow whatever that is to keep you from coming to church. People say, well, I, I had a call and I didn't want to spread it to nobody. Well, get here. And come on. Oh, my God, I wish I could just say, Bring that, we could just turn the camera around <laughs> and see these lips hanging out. Of it would be fascinating. Get healed. Huh? Who you belong to? Who's your God? Who's living on the inside of you? Well, but you know, my condition is different than everybody else on the planet. <laughs> Let's be faithful. To do what God's word tells us to do. If there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. And they will come and anoint with oil and lay hands on the person that is sick. And if they have committed any sins... They will be forgiven. So then what, what, what? So then what, what? So then why should sin be sitting around? Why should sin be in the TV room, pushed back in the chair, drinking a cup of coffee? <laughs> God has given us the solution, the truth about how to handle those things that are causing trouble for us personally, and or causing trouble around us. Yes. Say out loud, I'm in control of my life. With God, all things are possible. With God in me, all things are possible to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, <clears throat> what is the problem about this not having people who are like-minded, the Apostle Paul, dealing with this sense of having people who are faithful. Well, looking at verse number 21 of, second, uh, of the second chapter of Philippians, it reads like this. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. And I'm telling, I'm sorry, I had to, no, I'm not sorry, but I, it's, it's just, I have to go ahead and explain this to you. When I first read that, I heard in my head, for all seek their own truth. You know, 
We got this expression in there. Oh, speak your truth. Yeah. Listen, I don't want to know your truth. Because your truth is fickle. Your truth is affected by color and dollar sign and political persuasion. I want to know God's truth. Amen. Huh? Just keep standing in your truth. Now you stand in your truth and you're going to go to hell. Your truth and all. So, um, did Pilate, was it Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? We need to be asking some questions like that these days. What is true? And in Christians, members here at Salvation Temple Church, we need to be able to answer that, that, that the word of God is true. And whatever it has to say is what is right. Hmm. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So then now, now, um, okay, I'm good, I'm good. So now... I want to uh, run through these six little uh, teaching point areas about this topical method of Bible study, but then, and then I want to have us do a little exercise about how to uh, get a hold of good insight and, and truth and blessing from God's Word. Okay, so in the, in the book it talked about when you're doing topical study, uh, what you should do is you compile a word list. In other words, you decide what are the topics you want to study about or what are the things that you need to study about to find out more information. Mm -hmm. So then you put, you, you gather up a list of what all of those things are. Then you collect Bible references. You see, in a, a word, if you, if you want to study, I mean, just whatever. Water, if you want to study uh, uh, furlongs, if you want to study firkins, if you want to study uh, uh, forgiveness, or you want to study peace, whatever the words are you want to study, then you collect together the verses that talk about or contain that particular word or that topic that you want to look up. Then it says, uh, uh, consider each reference. Now, this particular type of Bible study method takes a lot of time. It has a lot of uh, information and uh, points in the process. So I'm not really uh, excited to, to, to have you do the, this particular process. Again, as I said in the beginning, I basically want us to just get flavored about how important it is for us to be able to do some Bible study. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then it says, so consider each reference. And then this is what I'm going to come back to in just a, a minute here. Then it says, compare and group the references together, or the, compare or group the verses together that are listed about the word that you're looking up. Mm -hmm. Then you condense all of that into an outline, and then you, can, you should conclude your study. Mm -hmm. Now, the condensing that information into an outline makes it very, uh, very easy to share it because you, you write down the main points, you write it down in a way that you can understand it. You write it down in a way that it, 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 it helps you be satisfied that you have the information that you need to know. And then you can take that and share it with somebody. But the thing I want to deal with, would you put up the action point just for a second? In the action point, I put this action point up here. It says, practice makes perfect. Would you please say that out loud? Say it. So now that means you can't do it just one time and quit. <laughs> you know, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, W, X, Y, Z. Now I said my ABC, won't you do it next time with me? Or something like that. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> I want you to just kind of settle in your heart, settle on the inside self, 
that you want to keep trying this. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least try it. And then if you run into some issues or some challenges, you can text me or look some stuff up online. Find out. Keep at it. But keep at it. Keep at it. Because you're going to reach a point where it's going to be like, bing, oh, this is really good. This really helped me. I found what I needed to know. So then, since practice makes perfect, I need you to say this out loud. Say, hey, Pastor. Say, hey, Pastor. Since practice makes perfect. Since practice makes perfect. Practice us now. Practice, practice us now. I'm glad to <laughs> have. Amen. Amen. How many of you all have a paper bottle with you? You got a paper bottle? How many of you have a paper bottle that is a reference bottle? A reference type bottle. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, okay, okay. Now, how do you know that your Bible is a reference Bible? How do you know? How do you know, huh, uh, 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 Nancy? It's got um, things in the middle. It's, it's got, got information in the middle strip down there. It's got some numbers and some verses and some letters and some verses. It's got some information across the bottom. So then, that's how you know because I saw some people, they wanted to look on the front of the front page. And see what the, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't have a reference Bible because it says so right here. <laughs> well, actually, the way you want to know is because you can see on the page little letters and numbers and other verses and stuff like that. Okay, so since you asked that we have some practice time, I want those of you, uh, those of you that have at least paper Bibles, and or maybe some of your, your electronic stuff can do something of the same kind of thing, I want you to turn your paper Bible over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. And what I'm wanting to illustrate in just these few more minutes, um, I want to illustrate in these few, four minutes, these few minutes some information about how reference Bibles work and some of the reasons why it's called reference Bible and I pray that you'll get a taste in your mouth to have you experiment more with your paper Bible or if you have an electronic Bible app or things of that nature that helps referencing happen then that would be great and I want you to try that and practice with that. Okay so then in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 9, in your Bible, whatever version you have right now, I'm going to ask you to read it out loud. I want you to read it strong. I want you to read it with power. Ready? Whatever that verse says, ready? Read. God is faithful. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes. 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 All right. So, God, the first three words of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Oh, see, I did it again. I did just like I did in class. I'm over in chapter 9. Yeah. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 9 reads like, did you get those first few words? Yeah. What's those first few words? Say it out loud. God, 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 God is faithful. faithful. Hmm? Yeah. According to some of the other uh, Bible studies we, we talked about, what are some of the, what are some of the, uh, the, 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 the the words that you want, questions that you want to ask about that God is faithful business. What do you want? What kind of questions do you want to ask about God is faithful? What God is faithful? What? How? Who? When? Where? What? Yeah. So, so who? Why? Who is God faithful to? See, I can see you. That was real slow. <laughs> but, and I, but, but, I, but, but, but I need you to have a sense of what to, I mean, more than just reading it. Then you decide, wait a minute. God is faithful to who? Say, I'm not. Then he who? He said, who? Me. He, he's faithful to you. Why is he faithful to you? Wow! Wow! Crank, crank the wheel, crank the wheel. Let me ask you one more time. Get ready, get ready, get ready, uh, ready. Why is God faithful to you? Because He loves you or loves me. Yeah. 
I know some of your, mm, almost used a screwed up word. <laughs> some of your love experiences haven't been so faithful. God loves you. <laughs> and he's going to be faithful with his love. Amen. Come on now. Amen. All right. So then, so then. All right. So who is God faithful to? Why is God faithful to? When is God faithful? Answer this. Answer this. Answer this. Answer this strong. When is God faithful to you because he loves you? All the time. All the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, so that's a little bit of that part. But let's get into the reference point. Why do we use references? Why do we use references? What, why, what are we going to use references for in Bible study? To, to get more information about what? Whatever's in that particular scripture. You get to find out more information about what that particular scripture is saying. Yes? All right, then so, uh, in those of you who have paper Bible or whatever, do you have, and I'm, I'm going to just give this to you for free, do you have a reference mark in that verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9? Yes. Is there a reference mark in yes. your Bible? Yes. Okay, what kind of reference mark do you have, Deborah? I have 1 John 1. No, 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 no. No, listen to me. What kind of reference mark do you have? Somebody tell me, what, what reference mark do you have, Michelle? You have an A, a, a small case letter A. That's the reference mark. Okay, now where is that reference mark? Where is it? Right next to the word God. So there's a reference mark by the word God in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. What is that, what is the point of that reference mark being next to the word God? It will lead you to another verse. How can you find what verse that little reference mark is leading you to? How can you find that? You look in the reference column in some Bibles. It's down in the middle of the page. In other Bibles, there may be something across the bottom or something of that nature, right? So are you, are you, are you, are you catching this? Yeah. Okay, so then therefore, uh, just kind of, so, so you, uh, and I just want to just get more people involved. Who has, who has a reference mark by the word God? Who has, okay, Sabrina. What, 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 where is that reference mark? Is it more than one? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Where is that reference mark pointing you to? It's pointing you to Isaiah. Pointing you to Isaiah. Chapter 49. Chapter 49. Verse, seven. verse number 7. Or will you, you have a, do you have a reference mark on, on the word God? Verse it says, in yours, it says 1 Corinthians what? 1, Chapter 1, verse number 16, right? So then quickly, let's just for the sake of practice, turn over to Isaiah chapter 49, verse number 7, and then a wilder and say, Nancy, uh, you all turn 1 Corinthians chapter uh, what did you say? Chapter 1, verse number 16. Okay, so then, so then, what are we expecting to find in Isaiah chapter 49, verse number 7? What are we expecting to find based on that reference mark? It's telling us, go over there and look in Isaiah chapter 49, verse number 7, because there's something over there that's going to help you. What are we expecting to find over there? Huh? Something more about what? God. Because that mark is saying there are other places in the Bible, other places, other verses that talk about God. And one of them happens to be in Isaiah chapter 49, verse number 7. Who's ready to read it for us? Uh, Michelle, read real strong. Read. And read it in pieces. 
Isaiah chapter 49, verse number 7. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. The Redeemer of Israel. The their holy, the, holy one. Their holy one. To him. Who man despises. To him. Whom the nations abhor. To the servant of rulers. Now there is a beast. Wait now, wait now, now. Just no, uh, hold on just a second. So then, when you go from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, it is saying you can find out some more information about God over here in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 7. And some of the information that you find out is that God is the God of who? Say Israel. Isn't that what it said? Yeah. Okay. And what does it out? What does it also say about who he is and what he does? Redeemer. See? Holy one. Right? God is the God of Israel. He's the Redeemer. He's the Holy One. And since you're studying and you said He 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 loves you, He's faithful to you, what does that mean? He can be to you. He can be your Redeemer. He, he's the Holy One. And what if the third thing? He's the Redeemer. He's holy. And you're God. Right? Can you accept that? Can you see that? Yeah. Now, in a reference process approach, the next kind of question you kind of want to ask yourself, uh, what other reference marks are in that particular verse that you were sent to Isaiah chapter 49, verse number 7. Are there other reference marks in there, uh, Michelle? Yes. What, listen to me closely, what reference mark is there? There's a B. There's a B. Anybody else have a B? Anybody else? Wave your hand. You have a B at Isaiah 49, verse 7. What word is the reference mark B on? King. King. So then, and then where... <laughs> Is that reference mark that's on King pointing to? Where does it want you to go from there? I have to go back. Do I have to go to the B? The B. Look in the yeah, and then and at the B and on the page, what verses are connected with that? B. Isaiah. Isaiah what? 52:15. Now we're not going to go there, but the point I'm trying to show you. Is that one verse, one word in that verse points you to another verse that has information about that same word? And sometimes in that verse, it has a reference mark that will point you to another verse about has, having information about that word, etc. Okay? Now, uh, or Wilder, you said your uh, reference mark pointed to 1 Corinthians chapter. 16, was it? Uh, 116. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 16. And when you get there and read it, read it so and read it so I can hear you, so I can repeat it. What does it say? And the baptism also And, uh, and the baptism what? Also. Also the household. The household. Stephen. Of what? Stephen. Be said. Be said. Fed or said. Beside, I know not. I know not whether I baptize. Whether I baptize you. Now, what was your, what was your letter B on? What word in First Corinthians chapter one verse nine? It was an A. Was an A. Well, what word was it on? It was on God. God was okay. Now, and I need you to read the whole verse of uh, chapter 1, verse 16. Ready? Read it strong. Read it strong like the yell of the kids. Read. <laughs> and I baptize also the household mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any of them. Mm -hmm. Is that the whole verse right there? Yeah. Okay, so reading that, what you want God who loves you, who who's faithful to you, what do you want him to do? <laughs> baptize your whole household. Mm -hmm. Then we ask ourselves, in that particular verse number 16 of chapter 1, is there another reference mark in that verse? 
There is, say yes. yes. Yes, there is a reference mark in that verse. It's a letter B. What word is it on? Uh, the T-H-E. The and then where, whoosh, it probably has a bunch of places. Are the verses connected with it? It says, uh, oh, I guess that's first. Okay, so now, now, tick, tick, look, at, look at me, tickly, tickly, she said, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you just on the page or anything, you know, you know yeah, sorry, yeah. Okay, okay, I just played, I just played, I got something I didn't know. But this is, the, whoa, 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 then she said, it's kind of confusing, because somebody said that in class this morning. No, it's not confusing. It's not confusing. What? The B is not, that's two. That's fine. No, it's not confusing. It's next to the. Right? Yeah. And what other verse is connected with the B that's connected to the word the? What verse? First, First Corinthians. Chapter. Chapter 16. Verse yeah. So then, so, excuse me, and you know I play with you. So the. <laughs> what, what, what's confusing about that? Where is it telling you to go? First Corinthians. Chapter 16. So that's not confusing. You just do what it says. If you say go there, go there. Yeah? Okay, all right. So then, now here. Now I'm, I'm getting ready to wrap up. Uh, because, because I did, again, I just wanted to give you a little appetite. And I hope some of you are sitting there. Ooh, I didn't know all this stuff was in what? my Bible. Uh, yeah, you know. and then that, and then of course it's going to send you someplace else. It's going to send you someplace else, and, go, and, and it's going to give you send you someplace else. So now here is a sort of sort of a Pastor Scott rule of thumb, and I'm calling it Pastor Scott because this information I'm using when I was teaching. Let me give you three points to help you appreciate when you're doing scripture referencing like this. How far should you go in order to be able to say you've satisfied the process? Number one, when you follow that scripture reference and it goes to some place that has absolutely nothing to do with what you're looking for, you can stop. Mm -hmm. Number two, if it goes some place that has no other scripture reference in the verse, you can stop, right? Because you, this is far you need to go. The third thing is, if it goes to a verse that's already one of the verses that you've been to before, then you can stop. In other words, it sends you back to where you were before. So there are three areas to consider when you're looking for scripture referencing study, number one is going to, when it sends you to some place that has absolutely nothing to do with what it is that you're studying, and Holy Spirit will help you understand that, then you can stop with that. If it goes to some place that has no other reference marks in it, that's kind of easy. That, that's not confusing at all because <laughs> there's no mark to send you anywhere else. So then you can stop. And then number three, what's the third one? If it sends you back to some place that you've already been, then that means you can stop. Now, and then so, so finally, in closing, who's helping you when you're doing your studying? Why is he helping you? Say because he loves you. And he wants me to know the truth. And what can you do with what, with the help that Holy Spirit gives you? Say, make a difference in my life. Yes, well, I tell you, you are so smart. <laughs> yeah, he, he wants to help you have some truth about what's going on in your life. And when you receive that truth and put it into action, you'll be blessed. Your life will change. I promise you, even situations and circumstances around you will change or it won't make no no how no how. You know, people will scream, holler, roll on the floor, and you know, hey, when you get through hollering, I'm gonna still be right here. Uh, okay. All right. I trust that helped you.
Trust that bless you. Here's the determination point. Any of y'all got kids you scream at? Okay. I need you to scream out those first four words. Ready? Scream! Many times to say. Yeah. Everybody scream! Yeah. Many times to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Many time to study. Why? It will bring blessings alive. It will bring blessings alive into your life. So then you ask yourself, hey, you still. You want to sit there and keep whining and crying and grumbling and complaining and being poor and dejected and having attitudes about everything going on? Or do you want to have blessing and peace and wisdom and power and strength and joy in your life? When you make time to study and engage yourself in these study processes, Blessings will come alive Amen. in your life. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 All right, I hope that didn't bore you too much. Uh, I, I, I pray that, that you'll, you, you'll continue on. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's always helpful having the good study Bible. And uh, hey, Wilder, hey, Wilder. Yes, it's always good to have a good study Bible uh, because in that study Bible, You'll be able to. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is <laughs> for those of y'all who can't see up close. This is a Salvation Temple Church Spiritual Warfare Edition of the Bible we had created decades ago, and got my picture on the front. I knew I was holding. <laughs> I mean, I in the Bible. <laughs> but so 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 so. Uh, and of course, we did. We deal dealt with paper Bible kind of thing today. There are uh, electronic Bible apps and Bible programs and things that technically you can do the same kind of thing on electronic things as you can paper Bible things. Paper Bible things are really good. And then as you're going through the study processes and looking up those verses, be sure to remember to write down particular thoughts that come to you while you're going through there and reading and, and, and developing in that way. Okay, let me invite you to stand up on your feet if you will. Uh, 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 I apologize a little bit for taking this amount of time, but I pray that it is time well invested. Let me have you say this out loud just one more time. The Bible is the Word of God. The Word of God is the will of God. The will of God tells me what God wants me to do. And when I do what God wants me to do, God blesses me. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, let me take time to share with you the gospel. Those of you that are on Facebook, but hold on just a minute or two longer so I can take this time to share with you the gospel. The gospel, of course, is found in the gospel according to John chapter 3, verse number 16. Uh, when you get there and read it, you'll find these words that talk about the magnificent love of God that I mentioned earlier as to why he is so faithful to you. Let's read this scripture together. It's up on the screens here. Read it out loud. Ready? Read. For God, God so loved the world yes, he did. that he gave his only begotten Son. Why? That whosoever believeth in him what happens? should not perish, but have everlasting This gospel points us to salvation. Salvation is found in Romans chapter 10. It's in the word of God. It's in the truth of God. In verse number 9, it reminds us of how salvation happens. Let's read that verse together out loud. Ready? Read. And thou shalt confess with thy mouth yes. the Lord Jesus. And do what else? Shall believe in thy heart. And what happened? That God has raised him from the dead. So what happens? Thou shalt be thou saved. Thou shalt be saved. So then we believe and declare God's word is true. And those of you are watching and some of you here, uh, let me have you pray this prayer together out loud after me. Say, God in heaven, God in heaven. thank you for today. Thank you for today. I believe your word is true. I believe, I believe your, your word is true. I've seen, heard, and read the gospel. I've seen, heard, and read the gospel. I've seen, heard, and read salvation. I've seen, heard, and read salvation. I believe. I believe you love me so much. That you love me so much. You sent your son Jesus. You sent your son. He died for me. He died for me. You 
raised him from the grave for me. I receive Jesus now. I receive Jesus now. To come live in my life. To come live in my life. And I declare. And I declare. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm born again. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, well, if you pray that prayer, we believe that the Spirit of God in His Word is alive on the inside of you now, and you are born again. Of course, smart people will find a good word church to learn and grow and find out more about how to study God's Word so it can be applied in their lives. So we trust that for you in Jesus' name. Thank you for being with us on Facebook Live. Share this video on your page if you will. Check us out later on YouTube if you need to do that. And we appreciate you so very much. Our website is S tc.church. You can find out more information about salvation and connect with us on our other social media sites. Thank you for being with us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.